Welcome to the first Play More press conference. We wanted to do this earlier in the season, but our superstar coach is a hard man to get a hold of. But we got all three of us here. We're going to answer a lot of questions you guys have left us. But before we can get into the questions, before I can even introduce the two co-hosts here, I got to ask you a big question, Ben, because it's been burning a hole in my pocket. How'd you come up with the name Bubby for Appleton? I came up with the name Bubby because... Bubby is actually the name of our mascot and the logo for Play More Esports, that adorable frog you see every time you click on a video. Realize pretty quickly, we, we, we never introduced that, and you named with the most popular Pokemon on the team after the mascot had to get ahead of that, as, as Bubby is something we've put a lot of time and thought into. We love Bubby. Adorable little guy, adorable little frog. That's the, the big question for me, but Tyler, there's a lot of other questions that we have to answer today from all the folks. We've got a ton of questions pouring in, and I, I think starting with everyone's favorite Pokemon on the team, Bubby, is an appropriate place to go. Is one one of our viewers wants to know, and we'll start with you guys, whoever wants to go first. It's to all of us. Who is your favorite Pokemon on the team? Well, as the head coach, I feel as I should go first because I work closely with these amazing players. And I gotta say, I think my favorite Pokemon is actually a Suian Samurai. I haven't used it too much as of recent weeks, but I really enjoy this Pokemon. I think it's a really cool concept with sharpness and Seasless Edge, and I've just grown to love it. I actually hate normal Samurai, so the fact I love this one is huge for me. This is actually a difficult question. The answer is still Bubby the Appleton. Uh, don't come after me, but... Draft League is one of my favorite things in all of Pokemon, and I always get really attached to the Pokemon on my team. So, I mean, Kilowattrel is something that I've really, really been impressed with. I love that so much. A Roaring Moon, I mean, an ancestor to frogs everywhere. How couldn't you love that? But I've always had a really soft spot for, you know, uh, some of the not as great, competitively speaking, Pokemon and, and being able to find a role for the, them in this format. Appleton has been so cool to watch. And actually, I think the only reason my answer is not Hisuian Samurai is I used to use Samurai in lower tiers. So I used to use that in 5th Gen NU Mister, and it was a pretty swell guy. But, uh, Bubby's, Bubby's perfect. I'm tempted to steal Bubby, but I won't. I'll, I'll give a different answer. And I'm even more tempted to say Sandaconda because I was a huge fan of the Sandaconda pick coming into the season. And when it's been used, it has worked out well. But I, I'm going to take the most basic answer here, besides Bubby, in Roaring Moon. Because it is so exciting for us broadcasting these matches when it gets down to the wire and it's just Roaring Moon cleanup time. It, the music hits, you, you know it's done. And, you know, coming off the, the winning streak, just coming to a close. But as we're winning matches, you know Roaring Moon is going to be very closely involved with those. He's going to be picking up most of the kills in those. He's been the, the best kill Pokemon in the league so far. I'm going to take Roaring Moon. And it's because I like winning. Not that any of the others don't have anything to do with winning. It's just that he has been a big factor when we happen to pull out the wins. And speaking of winning, Ben, this one is specifically for you. Winning takes a lot of preparation. So when you are preparing the team, how do you weigh up what the opponent might bring versus what you want to bring against that opponent's team how, how do you balance those two and how much conflict is, is there in terms of how you match up with them and how you're trying to plan for how they think they match up with you yeah i think there's a few things that go about it one obviously you always want to look for your win con whether that is sweeping with like roaring moon for example or just chipping them down over time with constant momentum or hard breaking hazards whatever it might be Find that win con and build around it. That's the most important thing in Draft League. I 100% need to specify that. You can have a Pokemon that looks good in the matchup, but if it doesn't benefit your win con, there is no point in bringing it. And I need to stress that to everyone who wants to get in the Draft League. Focus on your win con, make that your plan for the week, and that's what you need to build around. Uh, because there's a lot of Pokemon to be like, hey, this does good defensively against their team, but realistically, it's not going to get any chip on their Pokemon in order for my sweeper to win. It's all about progress in a battle and getting it to the end game. So as long as you're able to do that, you're able to win. So I'm always looking for my win cons, what supports them. And then typically I do always like to uh, also find a wild card. 
because um, that really just throws off your opponent and it shows excellent prep at the same time. And uh, following the build, the first round of builds, I always go to my assistant coach, Sean Jr. And we have one, maybe three mock battles. And then we just determine, okay, this is realistically what he's bringing because that's what JJ builds. And then this is how my team did against it. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. And then we just make edits accordingly. That has come to help a lot in some of these matches. And it's something that we make sure we do every week because it just really solidifies the team. And it's worked out for the most part so far this season. So now to John talking about the team overall and just the idea that was play more. This one comes from Nightly Gaming. You brought in a new team in the draft, like a whole new brand with this play more. So how does it feel for your mostly fun-focused esports team to already be having good success in competition? And was this how you expected the start of play more to go? Absolutely. Um, the success on the field, expected. The support from you guys, not entirely expected as I, I just wanted to go into this and really have fun. You know, Draft League is something that I have loved from its inception. You know, I was watching the first season and then I was a part of the second season. And after the second season and the third one that only lasted like four weeks, I was running the thing season four. And I mean, uh, so many good memories tied up into this and you know me and Ben's friendship really you know uh, came because of draft league we the last time I played draft I was on the same team as Ben it was a cool league where we got to both be coaches so uh this is something I love and I I just wanted to kind of share that love again uh with you guys make YouTube videos see if I could do something special with draft so the support uh, appreciated so much not expected um really really loved what Ben's doing, I knew what he was going to do on the field. And, you know, I've been thinking about making a team in this fashion for, I don't know, seven years now. So it's something I put a lot of thought into. Play more wasn't something that we came up with the other day. You know, play more. I think we did a shirt drop over a year ago. We've been working on this, thinking about this. Bubby the Frog is something that we've thought about for a while. So uh, uh, the stars were aligning and I couldn't have a better head coach if I looked for one. And we looked a lot. He's just, we, we, I mean, we, come on. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a broad search, but I mean, as soon as we saw Ben's face, I mean, we knew. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought, it helps with the mustache. There, there he is. Yeah, his face changed a lot after week one, we should add. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch our first battle. Ben made quite the change to whip this team into shape, but it's worked. The success has been there in terms of the results from match to match. So to both of you guys and bouncing off of that one, what were your goals in terms of what we would see from the team in terms of wins and losses? And at the halfway point, do you feel you're on track to achieving those goals for this GBA Draft League season? That's pretty easy for me to talk about as my expectations were for Ben to follow in my footsteps. Me and Ben play very similarly, and Ben is better than me. So when I played in Draft League, almost every single season I ever participated in, I made the playoffs, made the championship many times. One once, <laughs> but I just really wanted to have a competitive team, go above 500 and at least sneak into the playoffs. So the fact that Ben is doing better than that, he's one of the top coaches in the league. Playoffs aren't uh, guaranteed yet, but we're pretty close. I, he's, he's doing everything I wanted and much more. He's a superstar. One championship is cute, but I mean, when you have a head coach that has four, then it's just like, yeah, of course it's going to be him. Um, my goal as head coach, just getting to playoffs more so nonetheless and having a lot of fun with my team along the way. Um, I mean, the fact is, I think eight of these Pokemon are Pokemon I've never used before in draft, which is huge. A lot of them obviously being new to the generation as a whole. Um, and it's just been amazing to really just learn everything everything new along the way and implementing it into the battles and it's just been absolutely awesome so playoffs has just always been the goal because anything can happen to playoffs and it makes a wonderful story and i mean if we get to playoffs then we're champions anyways because i mean i'm not going to lose then so well and on that note there have been so many great moments along the way this season this one's for everybody from car truck slap great great name what <laughs> has been your most exciting moment of the season so far 
This has been the most exciting draft league season I, I've ever followed. I'm worried we are setting fans up <laughs> to expect every game to come down to the wire. Uh, but it has to be the Roaring Moon living the hit to get the win. It, I just remember in the commentary, like, he, he's got to risk it at some point. Roaring Moon has to take this hit. <laughs> and it just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and finally just, ugh. Living that, getting the win, it was exhilarating. It, it and this just allows me to be a fan again, and uh, I that that was one of the most exciting moments of any battle I think I've ever watched. For me, it's a similar win, but a different Roaring Moon living on low HP, and that's against the Edmonton Coilers when we barely beat that Iron Valiant. That one had me sweating. I feel like I played perfect basically all game, and for the fact that it still come down to that very last turn was insane. Um, Owen I've known for a very long time and he is a very good battler so being able to take that over him and such a nail biter just felt so good that pop off that you saw from me was genuine that was not me overreacting on purpose I was very happy and uh, it just it was so sick big fan mine is kind of a couple of moments but it's just one battle that happened to have multiple amazing moments and it's when we go back to what ended up being the first win for play more Obviously, the, the, the big story might have might have been the, the birth of Bubby, and that's okay. But I go back to, Ben, you've made a lot of great reads this year. But I believe it was the, the Asuian Avalog. You made the read on the Terra as it went fighting type with Samurai. You go for the Air Slash, kill it. Momentum totally changes. I, I remember in the video, it goes to full screen of you just in the sunglasses, totally expected it. And then that, to, to me, was... Not the turning point of the season per se, because you know it was only the second match of the year. But that's when it kicked in. Of all right, this team can do some special stuff because it was such a special moment and one of just many great moments from what was the first win for Playmore. So I will always go back to that one and just kind of couple those together with Bubby having his big moment in the sun against one of the greatest uh, competitive Pokemon in all time in Lando. But then also just that great read from Ben and, and John. This is just from me to you as just a, a, a quick question that I'm throwing in because you've coached so much. Mm. How is it from your perspective that Ben is able to, it feels like that's his biggest strength, is making those reads on the opponent in critical moments and nailing them almost every time. What goes into to doing that as consistently as Ben does? Really good question. And I, I think it's something that me and Ben share. I, I'd say he's even a better predictor than than I am. I, I was really good at reading the opponent and maybe playing a little bit safe from the beginning, seeing their play style, and then clocking it right away. I feel like Ben is able to do that, but then be a little bit more aggressive. You have to know what your win con is and know how to play to get there, but also figure out what your opponent's win con is. You know, what is the right play in their mind? You know, there's been times where I've played in games, Ben's been in the same situation where the opponent gets so mad because they think you made the misplay, when in reality, you just predicted what they were predicting you to do and then made another prediction. There's a lot of these levels of, you know, mind games. And it really just comes down to preparation and being able to understand your win cons yourself and what your opponent has to do to get there. And when the moment is right, it's not always going to go your way, but you can usually feel within the battle when is the right moment to strike and when even if you make the wrong play will it be okay because sometimes you switch something in and it gets one shot and everything uh everything gets sad and gray and bleak but uh, there's definitely those middle ground spots where even if you're wrong you can still be in a good spot well speaking <clears throat> of in conclusion okay, yeah, go i am him yeah <laughs> any any chance ben has to to hype himself up as a coach we welcome it <laughs> Hey, because he's got that guy. frog in him. <laughs> he's got that frog in him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take that hint, Tyler. You can have my autograph later. Don't worry. I thought I thought mine was already in the mail. Boun bouncing off the, the question about predictions, one thing that I don't think any of us predicted, although we would have loved to, was the breakout star that Bubby has been for this team so far this year. So, Ben, this is to you from Not Too Shabby, which Bubby hasn't been too shabby this year himself. Why do you think Appleton has performed so well this season? Is it entirely the surprise factor, or is it because it's a delicious pie on legs? Uh, even though that last part is a little concerning, I think it's really just because he's the GOAT. I mean, 
People definitely aren't always ready for a team to bring their D-tier Pokemon. At the end of the day, for most of these teams, that Pokemon slot on their roster is, I drafted it because I needed it, or it fits this role, and I'm probably never going to use it. Appleton's a good Pokemon. Like, it has good stats, it's just the thing is its coverage is a little underwhelming, and then obviously it has a base speed stat of Apple Pie. So that's where it's a little lacking. But outside of that, I mean, he eats hits thick fat on a grass dragon type. Not that bad. Grass typing sucks. But I mean, outside of that, he just does pretty well, you know? And there's a lot of situations where obviously our team, not that great versus offensive waters. Uh, Bobby can capitalize on that. Being the just a great grass dragon typing he is. And typically it's not stab ice. So thick fat really just walls anything they want to try and go for. Um... And in conclusion, uh, subscribe for Bubby. I want to jump in really quickly as we've drafted a lot of teams together, Ben, and obviously this was not a draft I was able to be a part of, but uh, whenever we've made a team together, those, you know, whether it's like D tier, tier five, whatever the, the naming system is, like the, those lower tier Pokemon, we make sure have a role. And it's not just a niche role. Like this is a Pokemon that we could bring it's on the team for a reason. There's a lot of matchups when you go in, you know, me in the past, I would go in knowing six or seven Pokemon on the opponent's side can be brought. We want all 11 Pokemon to be as viable as the other ones. So there's a lot of times where, hey, if we're working together, you may see Appleton and laugh at it or Santa Conda not really take them seriously. But in our minds, we know that that Pokemon's getting brought two, three times in the season because otherwise I draft it. Well, speaking of giving Pokemon uh, a purpose that might be a little niche, Ben, another question for you real quick, and it seemed like it was less of a question and, and more of a suggestion, maybe even a demand. I don't know. This one comes from Lemonator13. Uh, it, just four words. Choice Band Explosion Glamora. Thoughts? Yes. All right, we'll move on from there. John, this one is for you and I, and I, I think the... Ben, if you want to, you can jump in on this because you you have really been been a part of taking these videos beyond just the battle that's taking place and adding more into the fold as we've been able to tell this story across the season of what Play More is. So from Onlara, do you feel that your videos are focused on being entertaining to people who are into competitive Pokemon or bringing the, the excitement of it to people who aren't or trying to find a balance between the two? I would say trying to find the balance, but more than anything, it's really bringing the excitement of competitive Pokemon to the average viewer. I think competitive Pokemon has had an issue in the past where it can be such a niche thing. And, you know, obviously the official format is doubles, but when you play through the game, you're playing like single battles. You don't go into a gym leader and have a double battle. It's a single battle. It's a very weird thing in Pokemon. So. Do you get into competitive doubles, competitive singles? And then what's this whole draft league thing? You know, it, it can be really difficult to, to figure out why you should even give this a chance. But with draft league, it's, it's a really exciting thing just to follow a team. It's like any actual sport or esport out there. Getting behind a team and watching with other people, getting excited each week. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You don't always need to understand every little thing. So if we can elevate the the excitement of the battle and hopefully commentate in a way that I, i'd like to think i usually know what's going on or have an idea of it we have an incredible coach if we can hopefully break down the plays and explain them the best we can while not having it go over people's heads i think that's great you know i i really love draft i used to do a lot of post com battles and eventually that switched to live com but then i'd just be doing calcs on the side of like okay if they switch into this Pokemon and I go for this move, it would do between 41.8% to 46.5. And it, you get so deep into the nitty gritty that it's, and we're just talking, the, it's calculator time. And that's not very exciting. So I try to do the middle ground, but if I can't do that, I'd rather people who just like Pokemon and like having a good time to enjoy what we're doing. At the end of the day, for me as the head coach, I want this to be available to everyone. I love Draft League format, loved it since day one. I've took on and off breaks. I used to upload battles of my own, like John said. And at the end of the day, I'm just really happy to be able to doing this specifically because I used to live comm as well. And what he said about the calcs is very true, very boring, very lame. Ain't nobody want to see that. 
So the fact that I can go into my battle, me just talk out in the open like the weirdo I am, and that not be the main commentary for what you guys are viewing is amazing. It's such a weight off my shoulders while I'm focusing on the actual battle. Um, and I like Draft League more than like VGC, standard like Showdown, OU, Ladder, Smogon, all of that stuff, purely because it's just more creative. Like it's more fun. Not only do you get to go through the drafting process and have a unique team every single time you play, um, but it's just like, you're able to bring the most niche things in the world. Like, when is the last time you've actually seen anyone use Eerie Impulse? When? <laughs> and just like the fact that that can come into play for a match and be a big like reason you won the game is so cool. I love creativity and building. It's always been a big part of me in Draft League. I can be competitive, but if I'm not having fun building and I'm just using vanilla sets, then shoot me. I don't care. I want to be having fun and winning at the same time. And that's what you can do in Draft League that you cannot do in all of these meta-focused um, formats. Well, I'm a sucker for a good story. And what Draft League allows for, especially in the way that we're doing it, is for a story to take place and be told over a series of weeks and months. And that's the one thing with VGC, although, you know, credit to Wolfie. He tells some amazing stories in his videos. So it's, it's possible. You see it, you, you'll see it from people. But you have a team that you get to get connected to. You're with them along this journey, and you're watching them and their legacies grow. Like, now we're also attached to Bubby, and we all want to see Shell Smash Torkoal, and you see all these things unfold. And it's done in a way that's easy to get invested to. And I think the, the big thing for us, as John talked about, is taking something that is so fun with Draft League, although I haven't been around it as long. I've gone back and I've watched the content. I was a PM7 fan before I was PM7 editor. Just throw that out there. So I've seen a lot of this stuff. I, I was watching the, the, the Pelipers. I've gone back and watched so many battles and it's so much fun to watch, but it can be kind of tough to understand. So once you break down that barrier and make it something that is generally appealing, when there's, there's a story there and you can get invested and come along for the journey, and it's not just, you know, like VGC where you see so many of the same teams every battle and it's just prepping for people bringing the same Pokemon and you've got to bring the same Pokemon to battle their same Pokemon and it just gets so diluted. You see so many different things with Draft League and it's just so exciting and it's just a, such a fun way to get to do this. And I know for me and John being huge sports fans, Ben's a big sports fan as well, it's a beautiful combination of it. And to get to be a part of it and continue to push that out and push Draft League and push battling has been so, so so much fun so we'll cap that question i think we could all talk about it like we could make a video just on that topic alone but does anybody else have anything to add on that one the one thing i'll say is all of this is a work in progress i really fell in love with draft league but ended up doing other content along the way i used to do press conferences like <laughs> this and you know uh, awards at the end of the season and all of these extra things that kind of went away as time went on so we're still figuring things out the commentary will improve. I don't actually know if Ben's battling will improve because he's so incredible already, but we're going to keep working on making all of this better and better. If you guys ever have suggestions, we're open to them, but uh, I really love this. I'm excited to see where it can go. You, you mentioned the awards. I'm going to lean in real close to the camera. Everybody, be ready for awards season. We're going to need your vote when it comes to picking out all of our spots. Just a little teaser for what's coming with Play More. Just a couple questions left, Ben. We're, we're going to start with you. And this is something I've seen a lot of comments about this, really from the beginning of the season. Are you a fan of One Piece? And is that the reason for all the Pokemon nicknames? Yeah, I'm a big nerd <laughs> when it comes to One Piece. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm looking at like three posters I have above my setup. Zoro, Chopper, and Luffy. Um, etc. I'm a massive One Piece fan. Uh, I got back into it a few years ago, fully caught up, read the manga and everything. I want to get a tattoo eventually. I I'm a big fan of One Piece. It's my favorite anime and my favorite just like fictional media in general. Um, so yeah, that's why they're named after One Piece characters for the most part outside of uh, Bubby and Ginger who are also both goats. Um, so yeah, I I I'm kind of a nerd. 
a little quirky. <laughs> we definitely should have explained that early on in the season because it's all One Piece. You're a fan it of is. One Piece. Me and Tyler have never watched an episode. Not one and then episode. Ginger's named after my dog, <laughs> and Bubby's named after the mascot frog. <laughs> and we just had yeah. people asking all season long, like, why are there so many One Piece names? And then there's no, Bubby. Bro, they were Ginger. loving it in the comments. <laughs> oh, man. they love it. Oh, they absolutely. John, this is the last question for you and I. And then after mm. this, we've got one more question for Ben. But this is the last okay. one for us too. From the farming penguin, mm. where is Playmore going to be one year down the road? That's a huge question. And I don't know if I have the perfect answer today. After the season, I really want to take some time and think about it. But I'm really serious about play more. This isn't something that I just kind of jumped into to do for fun. I wanted to make sure it was fun, but I really want to see what we can do here. You know, this isn't just a, a draft team. Play more is an esports organization. And right now we only have one team and it's lower stakes, but what we're building here is really special. And I think the, the vibe behind it is something that I, I really love. It, it fits me, it fits Tyler, it fits Ben. It's something that a lot of people have resonated with. I don't know exactly where we'll be a year from now, but we're going to still be building and we're going to be having fun. It's not going anywhere. This is only the start. And I'm excited to see where it goes, but no one year, five year, 10 year plans yet. Just, I know that I've loved everything we've done here and I'm very appreciative of you guys supporting everyone behind the scenes here. And then of course, Tyler and Ben, you guys are incredible. Thank you for doing this with me. Yeah, to, to bounce off that, I I can't say where we're going to be, but I can say what we're going to be doing, and that's this. We're going to be doing our best to make content for as many of you guys as possible and, and trying to push this, not just a brand, but has really turned into a community that we have rallied together here at Play More and continue to bring you the best content that we can because, like John mentioned, Ben's talked about it too, the love from you guys has been insane. We feel it. We're working really hard to continue to up, up the production value, continue to raise the bar for what we're doing. Our editor, Landon, has been doing an amazing job. Guy, our, our thumbnail guy, he's making all the layouts that you see in the battle. Those two have been absolutely killing it. Obviously, Ben and John Jr. have done a fantastic job. But one thing that me and John do, and it's for better or worse, is we always look at the next thing as the best thing and that can mean the next video is the best video that can mean the next season is the best video and in this case it means that the next year down the road is going to be the best year that play more has had so we're going to continue to keep building this thing up don't know exactly where it's going to go but we hope you guys join us for it because it's been an amazing journey so far and that journey continues conveniently enough with our final question, Ben, and I have a feeling of where you're going to go with this one. Who do you feel is the most dangerous team in the GBA outside of Playmore? It was good you added that outside of Playmore. Of course, you know, of course. Otherwise, it's a rhetorical question. Um, most dangerous team, it's got to be the Bullet Punch Club with Uzi Gunner as the head coach. Man sitting at number one, we're going to be taking them on next week. So watch out for that.